We started our day in the Motel 6 in Pratt, before heading towards Great Bend for pizza. The air was hot and humid, but the risk was widespread, with the thought we may even use this as a down day following the exciting events we had in Dodge the day before. We all donned our respective football shirts and made our way towards the cell developing in Bennington. It's going to be close to some donks. And by donks, we mean large hail. Very large hail. So large, in fact, we decided to take cover under a garage forecourt. Stopping under the cover, we got out to watch the large hailstones crash around us. These were probably the largest I've seen, but I know they do get much larger than this. And Ian still made use of his storm protection colander. Pretty much. Oh, that must be the way. They're getting bigger. Oh, they're doing fine. They're getting bigger. They're getting bigger. As we played in the hail, a small tornado had touched down in the cell to the right of the screen. It wasn't a big one, but it was still a shame that we missed it. Oh, what's wrong with this? Upon hearing the news that a tornado had dropped and raised again, we soon jumped back in the car and headed south towards Bennington. The hailstones continued to fall as the storm grew in intensity. Eventually we got out near the base, which was still a little bit too high. We saw a couple of shear funnels but it was thought there was not enough surface winds to make them evolve into a tornado. That's not looking good, is it? Oh, wow, that is directly above us. That is swirly. So was that, though? Yeah, that's... that's so was that. Oh. <laughs> Even though there's clear signs of rotation, it just really wasn't happening. We were getting a bit frustrated. However, after about an hour of patience, our efforts were finally rewarded. It didn't look much to begin with, but this was going to be the biggest tornado I'd seen to date. Just watch it grow. Sorry about the cars. It was now 6.05pm and we had entered the magic hour. The tornado touched down not too far away from Solomon and it looked quite picturesque in the early stages occasionally becoming rain-wrapped. It remained stationary just long enough for our photograph of my football ship before we chased it towards Solomon. We chased the tornado along the I-70, just east of Solomon. When we eventually pulled over, the tornado sirens of Solomon were blaring and there were chasers everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Look at the size of this, Laura. That's amazingly big. That is huge. We were keen to stay away from the interstate, so aimed to chase behind it. Unfortunately, it wasn't the right call, and we had to return back to the highway. It did, however, give us a slightly different viewpoint, with the chance to see some power line damage from where it had passed.
see the left edge on that. that wall. About six miles we're gonna go east. Oh that is huge. Now back on the I-70, we tracked it east and pushed in front. We began to worry as it was heading for Abilene, but thankfully it weaved past the town. It was much closer now, and stopping at Abilene, we could now hear the roar of the tornado. So this thing's been on the ground for about 20 minutes. Look at the rain curtains going around it. That's a massive tornado. Then suddenly, the wind changed. It felt like it was coming straight towards us, so we ran back to the car. Yeah, let's go! I'm in. 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 Yeah, did you feel that wind change? Yeah. I've left the camera running to show how quick things can change and the importance of following instructions. When we were back in the car, we were then tasked with turning the car around and continuing the chase. There were many chasers on the road, so this was not as easy as it sounds. We then stopped on the I-70 between Abilene and Chapman and watched it approach. It was soon passed directly over this point in the road as it thundered towards Chapman. Okay. This is getting close, look at it. That is violent, look at that motion right at the bottom. It's been on the floor for the best part of an hour, hasn't it? Yeah, over an hour. Over an hour? Jeez. Straight to the town. Abilene, isn't it? No, it must have been. Oh, Q. Oh, God. Repositioning further east, losing Paul's camera bag in the process, we watched the tornado cross the I-70. Yeah, it was Paul. Is it Paul? Yeah, it's Paul. Just before 283. The thing is, that's it. This comes over. That just got bigger since we left, or was that just the rain? The dying light, the menacing sun, and the sound of sirens made this feel very ominous. The tornado was now on a collision course with Chapman, where we aimed to pass through the town and get some distance between us and it. The following few minutes were not easy to watch, as the sirens sent residents to their shelter as a tornado emergency was issued. The time to impact on the town was approximately three minutes from when we left the outskirts. This was pretty intense. The tornado is refined. It's going to go south and we'll get out of the way of this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know if that's an issue. I can imagine it is for you, just especially. You like, you Stevie, when, I, when I saw the sick tour, yeah. I thought, shit. Yesterday. Um, fuck it. Yeah, fast. Look at that wind going into it. Yeah, this is getting a little bit too close. Ah. Uh. Oh my god. It's a baby. 
Despite a head-on collision due any second, people still decided it was a good idea to stop at stoplights. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it'd be annoying in the fucking... Cannot stop at like stoplights on this. Unless you want to be killed. I understand, you want to get out in England. If there's a tornado coming in England, they'd be like... Yeah, we have to stop that. Right, straight across. Find that car to the right. The sign in the back says, Chapman, the town of the fighting Irish. I hope they brought their fight along today. They're going to need it. Oh, that's close. Yeah, that is close. 221 mile an hour gate to gate. This is the F5, isn't it? going to be an EF5, then you're gone. This is going to be an EF5. Oh, my God. Oh, that's close. Yeah, that is close. I don't think I need my long lens anymore. I do need a new pair of underwear though. <laughs> We've got Although slightly scared, I still managed to keep my sense of humour. That's a wide end. I know it's really horrible, Stevie. This one probably, yeah. probably uh, has killed people, and it's it's not nice. No, um, but we would have warned them. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, we've actually had a bad storm chase has been on the road spotting this shit. Oh, yeah, loads of people. Hopefully. Got anyone going yet, Dipper Chapman? Yeah, it's totally the emergency. GDS? Yeah, full so. Tornado emergency for the town behind us. We parked up a mile south of Chapman, watching in horror as we assumed the town was being destroyed. This did not feel good. Okay, this is probably uh, an EF5 tornado. We're pretty damn close. Uh, as you can see, I'm staying in the car. Not as going to do me any good, but uh, it's just crashed through. Well, I think it's just going to crash through a town. It's just had an emergency warning. If you look just over there. You can just about see the edges of the town and it's about to get hit. This is not good. That's fine. And we were right to be anxious. The velocities indicate the tornado passed to our north by a mere quarter of a mile, passing closer to us than to Chapman. The blue colouring is the debris signature, indicating the tornado was causing damage at the time. I think we should count ourselves lucky. But really, we weren't out of the woods quite yet, as an area of rotation was being signalled by barons, and as you can see, soon became visible. It was during this time we agreed we'd go back to the town to provide help, should first aid be required. We were unaware at this time that the town had not been hit, it had a near miss. We were also chatting to a local, who also told us his family were in the town, and he had casually explained to us that he hadn't heard from them. I always admire how calm he was in this situation. We continued to watch and wait for the storm to pass by, as so we could go into the town and help. Power flashes flickered and lit up the dark skies, with the occasional flash of lightning to light up our surroundings. It was a sickening feeling, well from our perspective anyway, thinking that this had collided with the town and killed people. I even feel those emotions watching and narrating this clip, and it is a feeling I don't particularly want to feel again. There was a clear contrast in the atmosphere from this chase to the atmosphere during the Dodge City storms the day before. The Dodge City storm was exciting, enthralling and a joy to watch. This storm just felt ugly in comparison, and really really sobering to us all. However. There is a bright outcome to this storm. It actually didn't claim any lives. 
it only injured one person, and that injury being indirect. An elderly lady injured herself on her way down to her storm shelter. With the power, the force, the projected path, and the fact that it was a miracle that no one was actually hurt, really does trigger the agnostic side in you. I shall leave this clip here. It captures the atmosphere of the moment perfectly. It definitely was a day of mixed emotion. From the early excitement of seeing another tornado, to that of dread when we assumed the storm was deadly, and then to that of relief when we heard it wasn't. I like to remember the fact it had a good ending, and the treat of this beautiful thunderstorm to finish off the chase day. Enjoy the rest of the show, and thank you for watching.